all glory. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. We have a good daddy. Even when we're brats, he's still good. And Matthew 25, please. Oh, Jesus is doing something. Matthew 25. <laughs> you know, when you think about that song, dedicate my life to be a worshiper of your presence, to that we are lovers of his presence. That's a life to be dedicated. That's a true Christian, you know. A Christian that doesn't love God's presence is not a Christian. A Christian that's not dedicated to worship Christ is not a Christian. Amen? Amen. You, you, they're just not Christians. They say they are, but they're not. Remember, the Father searches those who will worship Him. Anybody want to be sought out by the Father? Then worship God. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Matthew 22 and verse 1. Well, forgive me. <laughs> Let's go to Matthew 22. <laughs> Unless I'm mistaken. <laughs> no, it's tw mine says 22. <laughs> I'm so used to going to Matthew 25, obviously. Anybody want to be a foolish Christian? Go to Matthew 25, then go. <laughs> then you'll learn what it is. <laughs> it's one that doesn't worship the Lord. Hello? There it is. Glory. Verse 1. God willing. Oh, boy. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. You sure you're at 22? You're not at 25 now, right? We might go there later, though, okay? Verse 1, And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by a parable, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged the marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited into the wedding, and they were not willing to come. And again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, fatted cattle are killed and all things that are ready come to the wedding. But they made light of it. They made what? Light of it. And went their ways. One to his own farm, another to his own business. And the rest seized his servants and treated them spitefully and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Hmm. Therefore, go what? Go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So there were specific ones that he invited, and they, they took light of it. And not only that, they they sent those who were carrying the invitations to this wedding. They destroyed and killed them. So the king of these servants, that were also his stewards of his goods, they killed and destroyed. So the Lord went out and destroyed them. And then he said, okay, now we got rid of them, got them out of the way. Let's go with another invitation. You know, we had a flood that killed them once. Then Jesus came with an invitation. Does everybody understand? Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? They made light of it. Amen. In verse 6, And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard again about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies and destroyed them. 
Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are Wow. I call this the chosen few. The chosen few. Everyone say chosen few. Because there are few that are chosen. Amen. That's called, they're called the chosen few. The chosen few is qualified to pos for position. And God chooses individuals. In other words, he's choosing some. Some people have been invited. They've been trained. They've been qualified either for that position or maintain position or advance in position. It's a place of fulfillment. Everyone say fulfillment. So these individuals chose to just nonchalantly do what they wanted to do. Some of them came. Some of them refused. But some tried to fulfill a position without the right requirements. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Jesus called them harlings, harlings. They filled a position for money, but not to serve. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26, chosen few. I used to know a motorcycle gang called the chosen few. Praise God, we're an eternal army called the chosen few. In verse 26, let's speak it together. What's it say? For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world which, and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are are. That no flesh should what? Glory in what? His presence. But of him, you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom in of God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. See, he says, see that you have been called, invited to become qualified to maintain a position or advance or you become removed. Where to see your calling is as a function and responsibility as a steward, no matter where you are, no matter what job you have, no matter where God has positioned you. You're to see your calling as, as a function and responsibility as a steward of the Lord's possessions. And there's something he always requires, detail. Detail. In other words, to see things through, to maintain things, to improve things, to Im protect things. Why? Because these things are called his goods. Amen? I'm going to say it again. They're to be detailed, to maintain, improve, protect his goods as good stewards. All this is opportunity to become chosen for advancement or maintain position, no matter what it is, no matter where you are. How many of all God want, God wants to promote you in everything, amen? He comes to bring life in what? Life abundantly. But many people will lose things because they haven't been good stewards of things. In Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians 4. If you're not a good steward of 
the money that you have, you think God's going to give you more? In verse 1, the chosen few. Ephesians 4, verse 1, let's speak it together. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. In other words, walk worthy as a faithful steward of the Lord's storehouse and goods. And with all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering and bearing with one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the what? Unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit just as you are called and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and one and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So we're to walk worthy as faithful stewards of the Lord's storehouse, his goods. Keep in unity Maintaining a position of humility or humbleness, gentleness, long-suffering, endurance. How about cleanliness? In hope to fulfill your calling and become chosen as a good steward. See, when God chooses you, he labels you as a good steward. Faithful and true. You know... We're to treat our own goods as the Lord's goods. Amen? We're to be faithful stewards as even though we think that they're ours, they're still His. Everything that's come to me and you is from Him. Amen? Somehow, some way, you might have worked for it. Well, He gave you the talent. He opened the door for you to get the job. It's still His. Far be it that we should take advantage and do these things in vain, thinking that they're ours and not His. That's lack of relationship. Amen? And 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. These are the chosen few. Everybody there? Let's speak it. And for this reason, God will send. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Therefore, <laughs> we also pray always for you that our, uh, our God would count you what? Worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So in other words, God calls you to this position to be faithful. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That we may be worthy of this position with faith, to be faithful and with faith, power and direction to the Holy Spirit. So no shame comes in the name of the Lord. In our lack of alertness, consistency or abilities. Does everybody get that? And our lack of what? Alertness, in other words, People aren't alert. They're not awake. They're not detailed. Consistency. Man, if you don't show up on time at work, if you got every excuse in the world, you ain't consistent. Amen? And ability, the ability to utilize the talent God gave, gave you with its fullness, not compromise it. God is checking his children out all over. He's trying to release something very powerful is coming, I'm telling you right now. But those that are not faithful, those that are not alert, are going to miss things. Opportunities. God gives opportunities to everyone. So many times we miss them because we're still involved in our life. Well, this is how I feel. This is what I want to do. Well, I'm tired of this, and I want this. And then there's the I, I syndrome. That person has not reached the level of mastering the denial of self of every choice. Allowing God to have the last say. They give the last say. People that release the last say themselves are distant from the relationship of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hebrew, verse 3. Challenges will come. Temptations will come. Opportunities are here. Or whether we're found worthy of them or faithful is up to you and me. Hebrew 3 verse 1. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly call. So you're called, when God calls you to something, I mean, we're all called. Does everybody get it? It's a heavenly calling. It's a divine calling. We're all called. Can, therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful where? In his house. The things of God. He was faithful. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he, was, he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast. If means you co your cooperation. If you hold fast, the confidence and the rejoicing of hope firm to the end. In other words, if you are consistent, if you are alert, and you utilize the abilities that God's given you to the fullness. Amen? Worthy of this position. Worthy. It's a heavenly calling. It's a divine calling to keep his house upright and in order. It is a divine position. It is not a carnal job. You got to stop looking at even at your jobs. You may go there to work. You get paid. It's a carnal part, but there's still a spiritual part of this whole thing. It's a divine position God has placed you in. As a witness, as a steward. Not as a follower of unrighteousness and carnality. Not as a partaker of those things. Listen, the enemy's going to do everything he can to try and get you out of position. And I'm talking spiritual position first spiritual. He will attempt. Look at what he's doing all over right now. Look at how many people are uh, losing their jobs because they're refusing to cooperate with this foolish requirements. Some people will sign anything just to keep their job. Those are idiots. They're not willing to stand up for what God says and what the truth is. The powers of darkness will do everything to take your freedom. You give them an inch, they'll take a mile. It may sound good today, but two weeks later it's different. This is where you and I must have the wisdom from above. Not according to carnal wisdom. Not according to what they offer. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve money and God. It won't work. Amen? This is a heavenly calling. A divine calling. You are called out of darkness into his glorious light. With the abilities and talents by the Holy Spirit given to me and you to empower and do the things that are upright towards God. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Don't be fooled. Those are called fools. Is everybody okay? The devil comes to what? Steal and kill to destroy. What you, what's he want to steal? He wants to steal your identity, right? Well, people lose sight who they are. How about the promises of God? How about he does better, fire above all you could ever ask or think? How about he's got something better than where you're at? Be faithful. Amen? Verse 1. Let's grow for it. Or verse 8. I'm sorry. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Let's speak it. Therefore what? Do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Who, was say, who saved us and called us with a what? Holy calling. Not according to our works, 
but according to his own purpose and grace, which was what? Given to us in Christ Jesus before what? Time began. So you've been predestined before time began. But he has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the what? Gospel. To which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. <laughs> who dwells in you. You and I were saved and invited to partake of the holy divine calling and position. <laughs> Listen, God's got great rewards for those who are obedient all the way to the end. Amen? <laughs> and these are rewards. How about of his personal right relationship with you? What a great reward. Personal relationship and favor. Favor. He'll grant you favor. You'll have more favor than you realize. You know, you wonder why people are favored more than others. Because they're more faithful than others. There's a level of, and, and where God favors us because he blesses us. How many of y'all blessings are favors also? But sometimes he blesses us without doing anything because he wants to show his love for us. And Matthew 25. Oh, yeah. In verse 20. Matthew 25 and verse 20. Let's speak it. So Jesus said, He who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you have delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over the few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you were a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, so fear misled him, misled him. And went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what's yours. But this, his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. You ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has, more will be given, and who has abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. A faithful servant is called a steward. And, un he, uh, uh, and then there are those who are unfaithful. These were talents known as abilities God's given me and you. God gave, gave us these abilities to use correctly, not incorrectly. Those that misuse the talents will be judged. God is always looking for the extra mile person in detailed And calling, and call to be ready. We're to be ready in season and out of season. Amen? Alert. 
to be able to see things through, to protect and perfect. And be prepared for any upcoming event or attacks on the Lord's storehouses and his possessions. Remember, everything is his. Amen? Everything is his. No matter what, it's all his. Even what we have is his. We're to be good stewards of those things. And when we're not, God will hold back more. Is everybody okay? We are to be called faithful stewards. In 1 Corinthians 4. You know, one of the things that God gives us, he gives us an ability, right? A talent. Ability. One of the things he likes to do is he wants to see if we'll expand that ability on our own. To learn more. Amen? First Corinthians 4, verse 1. Let us speak it. Let a man so consider us as what? S servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Well, how are you going to be a steward of the mysteries of God if you're not seeking them out? Amen? Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful, alert, consistent, seeing things through, detailed. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God himself. We're to be faithful, alert, consistent stewards. Amen? Prepared, ready, in season and out of season. Listen, if you get in your car and you see that the tire is almost flat, you don't drive it until it's flat, do you? And then you get stuck. You put air in it. You prepare. You don't put something off when it needs to be taken care of now. Those are good stewards. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 4. First Peter 4. And verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the what? Same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. And regard to these things, I think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. And for this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be what? Serious and what? Watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for the love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling, as each one has received a what? Gift or talent or ability. Minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And if anyone speaks, let them speak of the oracles of God. And if anyone ministers, let them minister... It is with ability which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified. Through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever and ever. Luke 16.
chosen few. This is not the frozen chosen. This is the chosen for Jesus. These people are hot. They're alert. They're on fire. Luke 16. You know, I'll tell you the one, the first thing that God judges is in our worship. That's how he ch checks us out. If you're going to stand or not say nothing, he'll pass right by you. Whoop. Right by. You can hum, you can do a little beep bop, but you ain't singing, you ain't growing. Amen? Luke 16, verse 1. He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward. And an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. So he was reducing him from steward, in other words, overseer of his goods, and overseer of his servants. So this person was reduced from steward to servant. So everybody get it? Hallelujah. Verse 3. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot labor. I am ashamed to what? He's too prideful. I have resolved what, I, what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him. In other words, the people that his master are associated with, his business associates, and said to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said to him, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. So the master commit. Com commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their genera generation than the sons of light. So what happened to the steward? He went back to the worldly way. Does everybody understand that? Because he was losing his position. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon. Unrighteous what? Money. That when you fail they may receive you into an everlasting home. In other words, when you blow it spiritually with God, you got a place to go to and hopes and hopes until you recover. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous money, who will commit your trust in the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can to serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. It's amazing how money moves people out of position. You know, ministry is not a job. Stewardship is not a job. A Christian is not jobs. You don't have jobs. We've got to stop looking at these things as a job. We are laborers unto the Lord, stewards of his goods. And everything that we do is to be an example to others. Remember when Joseph, his, his own brother sold him out. Amen? He was put into jail. He was put into all kinds of places. But it didn't matter where he went. He was a steward of everything according to the will of God because he labored unto the Lord. And God honored him and men respected him. Even the individuals that were in the prisons because he labored unto the Lord, not unto man. Then I want to close at 1 Peter chapter 5. Joseph was the chosen, one of the chosen few.
Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5. Are you faithful in your stewardship of finances, choices, purchases, tithing, offerings? Faithful. You know, nobody gets away with it. <laughs> Just because nobody else saw it, God did. <laughs> 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the proud. Those are individuals that they cannot deny themselves or they even reach the place of mastering the denial of self. But God gives grace. He gives more. He gives more of God's plan. He gives more abilities and talents to the humble. Therefore, what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, alert, be vigilant, consistent, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking who he can trip up or deceive. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. In other words, you ain't the only one. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered from these trials, <laughs> hello? After you have suffered from these trials a little bit, that these trials may what? Perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, settle you, position you, so that you maintain an alertness, seeing things through, and become a good steward of everything that God gives in front of you. Amen? And to him be the glory and the dominion and honor forever and ever and ever. We want to be settled and set. Un unmovable. You can't be moved no matter what. You are ready in season and out. You are on. You are alert. You're ready to see things through. You're ready to go the extra mile. You're not a grum grum grumble or a complainer because extra things are need to be done. Amen? Man, we're going to be the witness and the signs and wonders to the world. No matter where you are, no matter where you work, and even if you don't work, amen? No matter where you serve, no matter what you do, you should be one of the chosen few, amen? Chosen few. There are the chosen few that live a life dedicated to Christ. Some of them live a life dedicated to Christ on their own terms or how they feel. That ain't going to work. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that the seed that's been imparted will grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.